Today's review is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's a 1994 film, uh, much, I'd say, in a fashion similar to Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, which uh, Francis Ford Coppola directed and produced. This was kind of a, an attempt uh, of a retelling a classic monster tale in this lavish type of way, in a way that would um, reflect the, the source material, the novel, uh, much closer. Uh, which I feel Coppola was able to do uh, quite well with Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, Coppola didn't direct this film. He produced it, though. Um, the director here is Kenneth Branagh, uh, who also stars as Victor Frankenstein in the film in the title role. Uh, and, and when you think about that, it is kind of a, such an interesting and pretty ideal uh, kind of matching uh, with Brana being a director and and a star of the film, because I mean at this point uh, his career was like on, on its its highest kind of plane. Like you know he he was known and quite acclaimed for being the Shakespearean actor, uh, you know, Henry V. Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, so he's well known for that, well respected for that. So th this is a, a huge production. Uh, I would say more of a mainstream type of film. Um, but it's, it's him still in his kind of similar type of material, but doing something a little bit different. So he's still kind of in a comfort zone here and able to, to work uh, with the type of material here. So it's like, you know, obviously, Victorian area. So, I, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, I'll say that this film much more accurately uh, represents the era of the time. It gives you a better idea. Like, there's great... Uh, uh, set design in this film, great costume design, um, and at the same time also showing, you know, the cholera outbreak uh, depicted in the film, uh, you know, you'll see street corners that are just full of dead bodies, and it's uh, quite grim, so it's a very well done movie, um, a very, a larger kind of scale movie than the 1931 film uh, by James Whale, uh, so... Yeah, I, I thought you know it's 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 a perfect matching of of this uh, director, this actor uh, doing the film. So uh, absolutely perfect choice, and you know, kind of like every great director has a little bit of Frankenstein in him. I'd say you know, or you just need to create to make something great, um, and, and that's what uh, uh, I would say uh, Branagh's intention is here. So that's all very good. Uh, also in this film, I mean, definitely you're seeing the movie for the monster. The monster is played by Robert De Niro in this movie. Wow. Uh, I mean, what can you say? Did you... Did you create me? Did you create me? No, um, not like that. Uh, not at all. Um, but uh, he's really good in the movie, too. Uh, I mean, definitely you're, you're watching the movie for the monster. That's what captures our imagination. And they do a good job of leading up to it, too, by the way. And, uh, you know, there's probably a good 40 minutes before we do see the, the creature finally created. Uh, and what he does naturally, it's 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 again closer to the book. The the monster actually speaks, is somewhat uh, eloquent, uh, and he is self aware. So kind of De Niro's choice in playing this character, uh, from 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 what you'll hear about the movie, he he studied uh, uh, stroke victims and their speech patterns there. So that's kind of what he he's done in this movie. But still very eloquent, self aware. He he's read the the journals of Doctor Frankenstein. He knows what he is. And he's not happy. Uh, this is a vengeful creature, which is definitely more in tune with the novel. He, he is aware, he's vengeful, and he, he wants, you know, Victor Frankenstein to appease him, basically. And it's very good. And essentially what, you know, this drives towards. Monster wants a mate. And that's what he wants. And it's kind of his uh, journey to make Frankenstein's life a living hell unless he delivers those types of goods. So it's, it's, it's a really... Uh, you know, interesting story that they're able to tell. Uh, I mean, it's, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's not absolutely 100% uh, uh, accurate to the novel. It, it's not. Um, but it, uh, I, I would argue definitely it's it's closer than, than the James Whale film, which isn't necessarily, uh, you know, makes it better, which I don't think it is better than the 1931 film, in all honesty. I don't know, you know, it, it, that film just is... A, classic has you know almost an indescribable quality to it that you can't really say why it's as great as it is but it just is spectacular but this one's you know a fair attempt i would say um so i thought de niro was good brenna was really good as frankenstein what probably makes the movie work the best i would say uh 
is Helena Bonham Carter in the role of uh, Elizabeth, uh, the fiance of, of Victor Frankenstein. Uh, if anything at all is an improvement on this movie, uh, from from this movie, an improvement over the the 30s version, I would say it is the Elizabeth character. Um, because in the originals, like in Frankenstein, in Bride of Frankenstein, she's not especially interesting, I would say, of a character. She doesn't have too much to do other than, you know, be a damsel in distress, I guess. You know, which I guess, you know, making her a, a, a more fleshed out character just maybe wasn't in the cards for for those types of movies um, for the earlier movies but here i think the character and helena bottom carter uh being the actress is given more to work with not essentially you know like this you know absolutely fleshed out character like there's definitely issues with this character too but much better i would say than in the original films and yeah it, it really is her that makes the movie what it is because you know, it is about the relationship between Frankenstein and Elizabeth that anchors the movie, I feel. And you do have to believe in the love story. You do have to invest in it. So I think that's very important. And, you know, it's just impossible not to fall in love with Helena Bonham Carter in this movie or other movies, aside maybe from, you know, Fight Club. Um, you know, unless that's your thing. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that relationship uh, was much more well done. So it almost feels like, you know, like a, one of those Victorian romantic period dramas before the monster enters, enters the picture and fucks everything up, essentially. Um, by the way, there will be spoilers in this review, so, you know, uh, proceed with caution. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, Frankenstein Monster, Robert De Niro, on his path to revenge, doing all these horrible things. Uh, really, I mean, the moment where you realize that you are invested in that relationship is, you know, after the wedding night when the, the they're able to embrace finally and we think all is well. We think at that point, well, Frankenstein thinks at that point that the monster's done with, he's gone. <laughs> oh, man, uh, it's so bad. Uh, you know, he, he attacks her in the middle of the night. He fucking pulls out her heart. It's still beating in his hand. He's like, I told you I'd come back. <sighs> whoa, whoa, uh, that is the moment in the movie where you're like, oh, shit, this really affected me. Then it almost kind of goes into like a pet cemetery kind of territory where it's like, how far is this character willing to go? So I, I think with this version of the character, what they're trying to convey with, you know, what he wants to do. Yes, it is about the same type of things that you'll see with tried and true with the Frankenstein character, trying to create life out of nothing, basically, but also trying to conquer death. Uh, which he's trying to do, because, you know, he's haunted by his mother's death, and, and when Elizabeth's death occurs, you know, it's it's his struggle to try to reanimate her, which I I, I, I haven't read in a while, but I don't think that's in the novel. I, I, I don't think so. But it's an interesting aspect to this movie, uh, which I liked. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it is a, an effective film that uh, has interesting and complex characters, like... The the Frankenstein monster he is a lot better developed here. You, you understand his drive a little bit better, and and I think uh, De Niro is able to convey that quite well. Uh, and Bran Bran, I just you know again he's a great director. I mean uh, this was really at the the height of his career. After this, he would go on to do uh, Hamlet, uh, which is one of the most acclaimed uh, Shakespearean adaptations on film of all time. Uh, and then shortly after that, he did Wild Wild West. He was never quite the same. Um, but this as it stands, I think it is a fair adaptation. Uh, it's a good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. Uh, I'm not quite sure what keeps it from absolute greatness. Like, I'm actually not sure what, you know, the general consensus on, on this film is. I think people are kind of lukewarm to it, which I do kind of understand, because you, know, you have this version, which is closer to the novel, which is good, but then you have the 1931 version, which, you know, if you're going to make me choose which version of Frankenstein is the best. It is a 1931 film. But this one, I think it is a fair uh, adaptation. Uh, apparently there are people who swear by a, 
a, a Hallmark Channel version uh, adaptation of, of Frankenstein. It's absolutely the closest, absolutely the best adaptation. They swear by it. I haven't seen it, but I didn't, I'd be interested to check it out. So if you've seen that version, please uh, comment below. Let me know uh, if that's really the definitive uh, Frankenstein adaptation. Um, but this as it currently stands, good movie, great cast. Bran is great. De Niro is great. Helena Bottom Carter is great. Uh, we also have uh, John Cleese in the film. We have Ian Holm uh, as Frankenstein, Lord Frankenstein, uh, his father. Um, uh, Tom Holche uh, from Amadeus is in the film. Uh, Aidan Quinn, uh, and I'm sure quite a, a bunch of other people that I can't recall right now. But it's a, a greatly assembled cast, legitimately acted, lavish production as intended. Um, doesn't I would say probably just doesn't generally have the the type of flair that say. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the Coppola film, had. So that had a, a unique edge to it. This one, it's just missing something a little extra, I, I think. I don't know quite what it is, but I, I think it's I think it's a good movie. Uh, I, I really like it. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen it, if you've you know already seen the 1931 version a million times, why not give this one a chance? I think it's uh, well worth at least checking out. Um, so yeah, that'll be my review of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and uh, more reviews to come 31 days of horror stay tuned for more comment rate subscribe all that great stuff um, until then stay tuned for more thanks for watching